Let's start off with just a very brief overview of emotional intelligence. <clears throat> I don't want to get into the theory because this is a practical session. You can read books. You know, pick up Daniel Goldman's book. Uh, actually, no, don't pick up Daniel Goldman's book. Pick up my book. I wrote a book on it. So, <laughs> sorry, my publisher would kill me for, for mentioning someone else's book. So, but, you know, you can read about emotional intelligence. All I want to do is offer you a working definition, which is the ability to identify, understand, and manage moods and feelings, both in ourselves as well as other people. So, lots of important words there. Because most of the time, we just get on with our work. We're given a task, and we just get on with our task. We don't really think about the emotions that we experience or the emotions that we evoke, that we generate in other people. So emotional intelligence is about identifying those emotions, understanding that actually, when this person meets me, uh, he feels slightly worried towards me. Why does he feel worried? I need to understand why he might feel worried. And then I need to manage that worry that I generate in this person by behaving differently. Or I meet another person and they feel anxious. You know, they're very nervous meeting me because I'm much more senior than they are. How do I calm them down? How do I make them comfortable and confident so I can get the best out of them? But you can't start to manage other people to inspire and, and you know, bring out the motivation in them to calm them down when they're angry, unless you can manage yourself. So it's about managing yourself, becoming more self-aware to start with. Am I making sense so far? Please nod. I know that you know, Sri Lankan audiences don't like to interact much, but please at least nod to show that you're awake. I'm the last presenter, so you know, after I'm done, there's the burning issues, and we get to have lunch, OK? So bear with me. So this is a model that um, we've developed around emotional intelligence. And the idea is that you need the foundation stones before you can move up to the next tier. So at the very base, you have a foundation of self-awareness. Unless you are aware of the emotions that you experience, your personality type, and the kind of emotions that you evoke in other people, then you can't do any of the other stuff. So you have to be aware and understand your impact on other people. The next tier is about self-direction. So once you understand your impact on others, it's about understanding how you can change your mood state. So we've had lots of talks in the last day and a half about how important it is to not give a damn, to be resilient. And that's a key, key difference between people who fail and people who succeed. Quite often, they don't do different things. They just do it again and again. They have that tenacity, that resilience. So if they get knocked down, they get back up again. And that's a skill of self-direction. Because sometimes we feel, you know, we, get, we, we don't get a promotion, or we don't get an interview, or, you know, someone says that project didn't go very well. Well, some people will just get depressed. They'll get down about it, and it'll affect their business performance. Maybe they'll give up. But the really resilient people are able to say, right, I don't give a damn. I'm going to forge on regardless. They can change their mood. They can disregard the depression and forge on become excited and enthusiastic about something else. Then comes a skill of interpersonal savvy. Once you learn to manage yourself, your emotions, then you can manage those of other people. But obviously, you can't try and manage other people until you understand your impact on others. But then, at the top, we have organizational savvy. So uh, it was, in fact, I think Chinta yesterday was talking about the fact that many of you experience organizational injustice. And actually, the pinnacle of emotional intelligence is being able to understand that sometimes we can't have our way, that we try and influence one person, but they don't want to give us what we want them to give us. So we have to understand that sometimes we need to go round them. There are ways. We have to understand political undercurrents. Sometimes a customer doesn't want to buy our product. A client doesn't like what we have to say. So how can we persuade them? Not by persuading them, but maybe by persuading their colleague or persuading their competitor. So understanding how organizations and groups of people link in together. But all of those are towards the top of the pyramid. And of course, what you need to do is start at the base, that foundation of self-awareness. But what do you need to be self